So welcome back, friends, to the show. April 8th, 2018, a Monday morning, chilly 33 degrees on the homestead, and today we embark on a brand new video series. How about Back to Basics 2? Back to Basics 2, where we are going to build something really cool using traditional math, traditional me <laughs> traditional methods as much as possible. So uh, let's uh, let's take a look at the net or the raw or the raw or the natural resources or the raw materials and see if you guys can figure out in the next few episodes what we're going to be building. This is where it all starts. Here's our our natural resource. So what we have here is we've got a what do we have? 24 incher a fir that Jack and I took down last winter that's been laying here in preparation for this project here. What do we have? So it is uh, well, a foot and a half, so 18 inches or so right there at the button. I think it'll be perfect for what, what we need. So the problem being is that this uh, went down and is straddling the creek and right in the middle of the creek is, is where I need to cut it. So we need to get it out of here and moved up, up to the location where we can start doing our joinery. Let's back it up a little so you can see the full picture. So there is the fur in question uh, that we need to get out of the creek bed. And I've got a lot, bunch of this wood that we cut uh, that we haven't finished up here, some big rounds and stuff we need to get out of the way. But the idea is to take the tractor here and grab this with the frostbite and pull it back up here where I can buck it to length. Then I think we can maneuver it out of here. It's gonna be a little bit tricky because we've got a lot of trees in here, a lot of mature trees, and it's a pretty long stick. But I think with a little bit of manipulation, we can get everything out of here without uh, barking up any of the trees. So as I expected, that's not going to uh, get the tree out of there. It's uh, uh, the ground is we've had. Uh, it's been raining for three days. The ground's just too loose, and there's not enough uh, down, not enough pressure on the frostbite. So we'll uh, we'll let, lend this up here. I'll bucket over the stream. Uh, just bucket from the top. Hopefully, it don't fall in the creek, and uh, then we should be able to at that 30 foot. We should be able to get it down. The whole thing overall is about 80 feet long. So that's a lot of weight for green fur for a tractor to pull. So. Let's uh, fire up the saw.
All right, there it is. What? Cut my finger. A uh, beautifully straight, perfect. This is even even better than I thought it was going to be. A 30 foot plus trim, 30 what? Cut it 30 and a half feet. 30 foot Douglas fir. Absolutely stick straight. So that's going to be. Whoops. That's going to be really, really nice. It's heavy. I might not. I might not be able to get that out of here with the uh, just by grabbing it with the frostbite. We might have to use uh, some tr more traditional methods here. But let's let's give it a try. We'll see if we can get get it yanked out of here. If not, we'll go get the uh, deep hood and do it the hard way. So back in the day before we had equipment, I used this uh, for moving, or we all, the family used this for moving all sorts of things from boulders to rocks and I skidded a lot of logs on it. It's, a, it's an old uh, it's a Jeep TJ hood. Uh, any car hood will do, but it, it works pretty good to skid it. One of the problems with skidding is this, the leading edge of the log. What happens is as you're pulling it, if there's a rock, if there's a root, if there's a stump, if there's anything, this thing will catch on it and you're not going to move it unless you have a monster piece of equipment. Even professional logging equipment, you know, uh, that has un basically unlimited power, everything is designed to get those logs up. You'll see the arch on the back of, uh, well, back in the early days, they used to have dozers uh, and they had a, like a trailer, a big trailer with an arch on it and they would run the cable up the arch and go down and they wanted to lift that up. If you can lift this up a little bit or keep this from digging in the ground, you don't need that much power to pull. You can even uh, pull, probably not this big, but some pretty good sized stuff with, a, with your truck or with a quad or side by side uh, by getting this up. So the car hood, um, what it does, will get the log up on this, hopefully, um, and then this will scoot along and keep that from digging in and anything that it hits a stump or a rock It will deflect and just kind of roll over it works really good, but it's really important how you set this up um, I'll show you how I do it. So this is a choker. This is just a, a 10 foot section of cable I can you can use a rope you can use chain you can do use anything the most important thing though is that Whatever it is that you're using has got to be able to slide through something on the front of the hood because what you want to do is, is we'll choke this log and then as we pull, it will pull up and what I've done is I've put a, I never can remember, shackle or clevis, this thing right here. I put this in there, uh, you could just knock a hole in the front of your hood, get something in there that the cable or rope or chain will slip through and as the log comes up, it won't, it'll stop here and it won't pull the log off the hood. That's the most important part. If you just try to throw a hood underneath there, you'll just pull the log off the hood and you're gonna have aggravation. So let's choke the log and it'll all come clear. It'll look, it'll look a little bit, it's easier to understand when you see it all, all working. Let's see if we can't get this under here. Now we don't wanna choke too far back or, or again, the log will pull over, over top of the, uh, the hood and we don't want that. I'm gonna be, I'm hard to ground here, so we'll have to dig this out a little bit. Right tool for the right job. Oh, I'm on a, I'm on a root. Little, little, there we go, I think we're through. You can hear the axe pierce now. Okay, this is good, we got through here. So, uh, uh, again, most people are not gonna have a 
choker cable. A chain will do the same thing. What you want on your choker. A, a chains, chains on the other hand, I probably wouldn't recommend using a rope. What happens is there's, you'll just burn through it. So uh, it'll, uh, it's, the ropes are not very abrasion resistant. And if you drag them along, if you hit rocks and stuff, they'll just sever them right away. It's probably better to use a chain cable is my favorite. I always get a lot of questions about which uh, which axe I use. I have several, but this one's my favorite. Those of you guys who follow the channel know that. This is the Swedish-made Grand Forsbrook Small Forest Axe uh, for just uh, uh, homesteader types or just working with your own on your own land. You just can't beat it. It's it's probably the best axe, pound for pound. Uh, it is, with no question that I've ever used. There's nothing nothing else. To it, this is the Benchmade 940 of, uh, of axes. So here's a little trick for you for skidding. So as we went along, you know, we limbed all those branches off. Now on the bottom side, you can't always get to those because it's laying in the dirt and you get these nubs that stick out. Well, that, that creates quite a bit of friction uh, when you're skidding. So one trick you can do is when, when you're setting your choker is if you can set the cable so when it comes tight, it comes tight down here underneath. As we pull, sometimes it will roll it around so the top side that we cleared, which is nice and smooth, uh, will be on the bottom. And that way, uh, you, you, you need less power uh, to move that log. So it doesn't always work, but usually you can, by the way you choke it, uh, you, can, uh, you can manipulate the log uh, somewhat. So we're gonna, that's what we're gonna shoot for here, is that it will come tight underneath and roll that up. Now we can go through our, our hood. Take the end of your choker, now just go through there, and we can go back and tie onto the machine or, or wench or whatever you're using. Now you can see how that works. That, how that works, that log won't go any further than this. It'll stop right there and, and it'll just be on its merry way. We may not be, I, or I may not be able to get this out of here uh, with this tractor because I am pulling uphill uh, and the ground is really, really soft. So we'll take it slow and see, see how it goes. If not, we might have to come in here um, and winch it up. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll give this a try first. That's all the time we have for today's show, but we will pick up where we left off next time. I am looking forward to this. I think you guys are really going to enjoy this project. It's, uh, it's ambitious, <laughs> but uh, we'll certainly see it through. Uh, one question, though, uh, for you guys, and I will put a poll up on the channel for this uh, that you can vote. And you, you, know, you, by and large, I mean, you uh, as my subscribers will, can dictate how you want this series to unroll. Would you like uh, me to do it like the traditional one where I, I just uh, showed how to do things everyone uh, ev with with a camera um, visually rather than talking? I don't even think in the original Back to Basic series, I, I don't think I even spoke on it, which was really fun and nice to shoot because I, I uh, get very tired of hearing my own voice with all the editing that I do, but uh, it's probably worse for you guys. But let me know, would you prefer... Should we shoot the rest of it in that format with just uh, some nice music, the relaxing style, and I'll go into extra detail with the camera and, and show every step? Or would you prefer that um, I um, I'm narrate and, and talk a little bit about what we're doing and um, hopefully not too much and kind of explain the process and, and uh, working through these things? Uh, so, I'll again, I'll put that uh, uh, vote I'll put that up to a vote for you guys, and whatever the majority is, that's what um, that's how the Back to Basic Series Two will will be. All right, so we are really excited. A big week coming up. We are uh, Wednesday. What's today? Monday. Monday, April eighth. Uh, Wednesday, we will be leaving uh, to go down and su to Southern Oregon to Thunder Ranch for our Urban Rifle course, um, our couples course that we put on uh, that sold out very rapidly i think it sold out within an hour um, and there's going to be 10 of us so we have uh, couples going down there it's going to be um, um, boy and girl <laughs> i guess man and woman uh, and uh, we're really looking forward to that um, it's going to be super fun funny thing i'll tell you share a story with you mrs w of course as you know is not a gun person uh, and so a lot of these things are new to her and she uh, uh, well she grabbed me the other day and said you know what i 
I don't want to go there and and look like um, a, um, a complete look completely naive and, and not have a clue what's going on. Can you show me how to work an AR-15? Can you show me how to how to use it? And I said, Yeah, we we can certainly do that. And I have two ARs. I've got a a Franken build that I did years ago, which is is fine. It's, it's nothing super fancy. And then of course I've got my dream gun, which is my Daniel Defense. Well, I had had everything all pimped out on my DD, and and I was really looking forward to using it. And unfortunately, Mrs. W accidentally picked up my rifle off the tailgate when we were going out to shoot instead of the franken gun and then when i gave her the franken gun well she was not satisfied <laughs> she, she was a little cross with me uh that uh, i didn't automatically give her the good one and I lamented a little bit and like, oh, honey, you know, I mean, you know, you're not really into this. And, you know, I built this gun specifically for this course. And, you know, it, it's, it's, you know you're going to mess up my life. <laughs> she wasn't having it. She wasn't having it. I think primarily because the recoil is nicer and the weight, uh, the Daniel defenses are, are so, so very light and wonderful to shoot. So I will be shooting the course with the Franken gun and Mrs. W, of course, will be shooting with the DD. So. Um, I will video what I can uh, on that. Um, uh, I'll follow along. We'll, we'll try to do a running daily vlog and uh, meet some of the characters. And uh, I, I just think the world of Clinton Heidi Smith. I spent four days with them on the tactical rifle shoot and um, the wonderful people. I can't. I'm excited. I, I get excited about a lot of things, but I'm really, really excited about this. So um, anyway, we'll pick up on the Back to Basics 2 uh, when we get back. But we've still got quite a bit to go. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the thumbs up. If you'd like to get yourself a nice gift or a gift for your loved ones, I invite you to go to our um, Amazon store, wranglermart.com. I've got the Grand Force Brooks small forest axe in there, my axe of choice, and as well as some of the other things that I like. And uh, we're always adding stuff. So we really appreciate that and pre appreciate the support. And we'll see you guys on the next video.